KCIM Sports presents the Pizza Ranch Saturday Morning Coaches Show with Sports Director Jeff Blankman. Thank you very much, John. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show on this Saturday morning. We're going to talk to four coaches this morning. Ryan Steinkamp by the Camper Knights will hear about his thoughts after a hard fought, uh, tough 48 to 27 loss to, to George, Central Line George Little Rock last night, the number one team in Class 2A. That game was a lot closer than that final score indicates. It was a 27 27 game in the fourth quarter of that one last night. So, talk with Coach Steinkamp coming up. Deb Danner, we caught up with her this morning. They're on their way over at two Ames today. They, of course, got their state qualifying meet going underway today, looking to maybe get about six, seven, eight events over to the state meet. So that would be awesome. So we wish them the best of luck coming up today as well. We'll wrap up the season uh, with Kemper volleyball coach Rusty Wintermote uh, as they advanced to the state tournament again and fell on it Tuesday in the quarterfinals. On uh, Thomas Nelson, Kemper Cross Country wrapped up their season with three runners of its state last Saturday. We'll get his thoughts on the season and on how those runners did and the future of his program coming up in this hour as well. Don't forget our player of the game picture with uh, Brock Bating from last night up on the CB Sports Network uh, web uh, social media sites. It's on the website. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, audio from last night's uh, Kemper game, the broadcast podcast of it is available on the website at sports.1380kcim.com. I'll do it later on today. I'm going to get a, a recap, or I should say tomorrow. I'll get a, a, a Brinks Exterior Sports Report, a game recap of that Kemper game, and I'll get that typed up for you again tomorrow. We're going to be celebrating the Rewind All-Star festivities for most of today, so probably won't be able to get to that today because, again, that event does get underway at 10 o'clock this morning or excuse me at uh, one o'clock this afternoon um so i'll be busy getting everything ready for that today uh and looking forward to that so come on out that's a free event and i'll talk about that more coming up at the end of the show but of course we want to start with last night's football playoffs we're also going to run through the pairings uh, that are going to be going on at the Dome starting at Wednesday this upcoming week. So in Class 2A, again, Kemper Falls to Central Line, Georgia Little Rock 48-27, Van Meter down Prairie City, Monroe 31-21, it was Spirit Lake over West Lyon 20-19, and Monticello got by Minneapolis 34-28. Class 3A, Creston over Webster City 50-27, Solon beat West Delaware 36-35, Williamsburg edges Mount Vernon 38-35, and Heelan wins in three overtimes over Sioux Center 27-26. Class 1A, Grundy Center beat Dyke New Hartford 40-0. It was Underwood over OABCIG 43-8. Columbus Catholic down Sumner Fredericksburg at 35-14, and MFL Marmack took care of Regina of Iowa City 22-7. Class A, East Buchanan over St. Ansgar 30-16. Woodbury Central downs Loma 35-0. West Hancock doubles up Wapsie Valley 44-22 and Madrid tops ACGC 21-14. Class 4A, Western Dubuque over North Scott, 21-7. Lewis Central rallies to beat ADM, 32-21. Bondurant for our tops at Glenwood, 31-21. And it was North Polk over at Xavier of Cedar Rapids, 17-14. And then Class 5A, Southeast Polk slips by Cedar Falls at 21-20. Ankeny over Dowling Catholic, 14-7. Valley defeated at Waukee, 20-7. And Ankeny Centennial over Bettendorf, 41-14. Again, eight player games getting underway at the Dome this coming Wednesday. Uh, the first matchup of the day on Wednesday starts at 10 o'clock with Bishop Garion against Winfield Mountain Union following that game around 1 o'clock. It's Gladbrook Rhinebeck against Bedford. On Thursday, Class A at 10 in the morning, Madrid takes on West Hancock while at 1 o'clock it'll be East Buchanan Winthrop against Woodbury Central out of Moville. Class 4A at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, North Polk against Lewis Central. Then at 7 o'clock it'll be Bondurant Ferrara against Western at Dubuque. On Friday next week, November the 10th, Class 1A at 10 o'clock in the morning, Columbus Catholic out of Waterloo against Grundy Center. And at 1 o'clock, it'll be MFL Marmack against Underwood. Class 5A, Friday afternoon and evening at 4 o'clock, it'll be Valley against Southeast Polk. At 7 o'clock, Ankeny Centennial takes on Ankeny. And then on Saturday, Class 2A, 10 o'clock in the morning, Monticello against Van Meter. And Spirit Lake at 1 o'clock will take on Central Lion George Little Rock. Class 3A, Bishop Heelan will battle at Creston at 4 o'clock, rounding the semifinal rounds out at 7 o'clock. It'll be Williamsburg against Solon. We'll step away, take a break. Ryan Steinkamp, the Kemper Head football catch, set to join us next right here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. 
score big when you come on down to the Carroll Pizza Ranch to dig into the country's best chicken, piping hot pizza, and their fresh salad bar. They're open to serve you all your Pizza Ranch favorites from 11 to 8 on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 5 to 8. Get their famous buffet your way where you can request your favorite pizza. Everyone wins at Pizza Ranch. Just off Highway 30, downtown Carroll, open seven days a week. Whoa, that's good. Carol Broadcasting Stations KCIM, KKRL, and KIKD is looking for organizations that regularly distribute information about employment opportunities to job applicants or have job applicants to refer. If your organization would like to receive notification of job vacancies at our stations, please notify John Ryan at 1119 East Plaza Drive, Carroll, Iowa, 51401. Call 712-792-4321 or email john at carolbroadcasting.com. Carol Broadcasting is an equal opportunity employer. Pizza Ranch Coaches Show on this Saturday morning. Jeff Blankman joining right now, of course, my Camberhead football coach, Ryan Steinkamp. The Knights fall Friday night to number one uh, central line, George Little Rock, 48-27. to The game a heck of a lot closer than what the final score indicates. Coach, appreciate the time here tonight. Great effort out of the guys. Uh, I know it's no solace to you guys right now, but the guys up in the press box said that by far this was their toughest game, even tougher than the West Lion game. So you guys gave these guys a better game than what it sounds like anybody did all season. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm proud of our kids. You know, they they gave it their all. I, mean, I said, yeah, the scoreboard doesn't justify it. You know, we we went you know toe to toe, and you know, just really really proud of our kids. You know, they 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 bought into everything. They gave they gave it their all, and you know, and you know, I, I wish I wish we, I, I could have got them into the dome because they, they they deserve it and they're good enough to be in there. So, yep. but you know, uh, just really proud of them. You guys, you you come up here. You're the underdogs. I thought you guys did a great job. You got the ball first. You kind of mixed up the run, the pass. You went right down the field. How important was that to kind of establish the offense right away? Good. I mean, it's real important. But I know, like, I, I, we came this game with confidence you know, yep. and believing. Yep. You know, like when it happened, you know, like, you know, like, I, I, I'll be honest. I wasn't surprised. I, yes. I wasn't surprised. It felt that's how that kind of how the last eight or nine games have gone. Is we were just we're that we're locked in. We got uh, offensive coaches doing a great job. Every developing, you know, and. Um, yeah, it, 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 it felt it felt normal. To be honest with yep. you. Our, our kids came in here. You know, the game plan was good. Um, you know, every, every, everything was business. And yeah, I mean, they, they played great. Talk about the growth of that offensive line from the beginning of the year to be able to just march the down, ball right down the field against this defense to start the game. Oh, it, it was huge. You know, they, they they did a great job of you know, run game was a work in progress all year, but it got, it got better, it got better. Uh, the pass game, they, you know, they they gave Brock time back there. You know, I know they, I know they got to him a little bit last night tonight, but I guess they went they went seven DB, so there there was no quick passes and Brock <laughs> had to hold the ball a little bit longer. But no, I thought they did a great job overall. So. With that passing game, you guys went deep on the very first play of the game. Was that kind of a, to just tell them, hey, we're, we're not afraid of you guys and we're not afraid to take our shots because we can score against anybody and we'll prove it to you? I don't get asked Clink. I really didn't. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I switched. I switched headsets. I'm like, I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't even know what the first play of the game was. You know, I kind of. I kind of let them do their thing. with that. Um, I was like, I, I didn't mind it. I'll, 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 I'll be honest because it was, it was. It was a close yep. play. And yep. yeah, I think. Um, you know, they they hadn't seen a team like us all year passing wise, and they, it got them out of rhythm and stuff like that. So yeah, I thought offensively they did a great job. You knew that they were going to run even in Vanderzee a lot tonight. How were they able to establish both of those guys on the ground? Um, well, I mean, uh, lots of different ways. You know, they're they're they the good, very good line, and him and the uh, even kid are just they're a heck of a runners. I mean, they was you know we, we were in good position a lot, um, but you know it comes down to tackling and get off box, and you know we struggle with that time. Their, their size kind of wore us a little bit. I'm yep. sure, and you know, and I, I I was on the sideline trying to think of any which way to put them in a better position, and I'll, I'll go back and watch film, and I'll probably kick myself about oh, I should have done this, should have done that. Uh, so I you know I wish I could have put the kids in better spots um, to make to make those plays because they you know it wasn't because of lack of effort. Um, you know I think they're their size and they said those guys are really you know they're both going to Iowa next year so yep. they're both very very good players um and stuff so you know you know film the film will tell all and I'll, I'll hopefully grow from that and uh um I'll be able to help out you know down, down the road but yeah very 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 good team very good running team they scored a tie at seven I thought it was important for you guys to go right back down the field and you did 
what was so nice, and I know you focus on the defense, but what was working so well about you guys offensively? Because I thought even though you weren't running for a lot of yards, you were running to kind of keep them honest with having to defend that run game. Yeah, yeah, no, they run, they run kind of a, a, a soft, a, a soft cover three. So like you know the, the out routes and stuff like that were there. So like we, we, we just took it, you know, and our, our kids made plays, and you know I think it kind of caught them off guard a little bit how easily we were putting those. Yep. Like you know, and it, it just seemed natural to us and stuff. So they had, they definitely had to switch out of it a little bit. When did they switch out and go to the seven defensive back look you were talking uh, about? Towards the end of the third quarter, towards the end of the third quarter, a, a little bit, you know, I think, um, and we tried running the ball and didn't have a whole lot of success. They said their D line linebackers were good too. You know, we were getting a couple yards here there, uh, but then. You know, it, it, yeah, it definitely, we had, a, we had a few stalls there towards the end of the third, start of the fourth, I think. Up 21 to 15 at the halftime. Uh, you guys also got that onside kick, had a chance to extend that lead. Talk about the decision to do that in that situation because it worked brilliantly. <laughs> it made me look really, it made me look really good. <laughs> it was supposed to be a squib middle because <laughs> there was a hole in the middle there. It was, I, I'll, I'll be honest, yeah, it, it, it was supposed to be a squib middle and it, I think Tommy missed it a little bit, and it clanked off a front kid, and we got it. But holy cow, was that awesome! <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that was a huge, that was a huge momentum swing. We didn't get any points out of it, but it was just, I think, it also just sent a message to them. You know, they they probably thought, oh, what are these guys are crazy over there? Right? No, I'm not that crazy. <laughs> no, yeah. So no, it was, it was, no, it was, a, it was. A, that's why you know when we messed that, we, we had that one that happened to us in the fourth quarter. Like so, you know, yep. that's why the ball, that's why the ball bounces sometimes. It's a yep. football soccer shape. You know, high school kids and good things happen. Uh, you know, to, to both sides there. What was the message to the guys at the halftime up 21-15? You know, play is 0-0. Like, you know, they you know, kind of talk about how they really haven't been in the situation before. Or, yep. you know, think back to the beginning of the year, we have been here before, guys. And play like a 0-0, play like you're down. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, we, we did come out well. Um, you know, there's, you know their, their run game, um, they, start, they started, they went, um, I, got, I kind of thought they would. Um, they, they went to a double wing, so they had more guys in the box. And, you know, we just, with two, with two guys, and go, that, you know, pulling it, reading it, you know, it, it's tough to defend both sides it's tough to defend both sides of the line i had it i had it in my plans i was like if they if they're struggling that's what they're going to go to and they went to that and yeah it was, it was tough to stop tied at 27 they score <laughs> and then you mentioned it here a moment ago they, they kick they don't kick deep it's kind of a pooch and, and somehow you guys don't get on it and they do how much did that swing this game yeah, I mean that, that, that was a, that was a huge play. I mean, it, it, it didn't change the game, didn't change the right. outcome, but it definitely it definitely helped them out and gave them and gave them some momentum, you know. But you know, that's, that's part of the game. You know, we got one earlier on them, they got one on us. You know, it's kind of a it's you know it's a it's it's, it's a game of inches. <laughs> now that ball, I think I'm yeah, I, I think it was pretty darn close. I couldn't see it obviously. I think it's pretty darn close going out of bounds. Yeah. Coach, you end up falling 48-27, as I mentioned, as people know that listened or watched a lot closer game than the final score indicated. Eight wins last year, you get to the second round. Eight wins this year, eight and three. You end up in the quarterfinals, another step forward. How is this program continuing to build and getting better year and four, year number four for you? Um, I think it's just the buy-in. You know, our, our, our culture set. You know, you know, we have a lot of phrases and saying, but like the kids, the kids know. Like you know, like we, we believe in it. And they, they they buy into that. You know, one play at a time. On um, the little things matter. You know, film study, being students of the game, um, practicing hard. Um, you know, there's the things we got to work on that we'll keep we'll keep improving on. But I think it's just you know I give a lot of credit to the seniors. You know, they're there with me from freshman. I said, you know, um, when they're when they're freshmen and we struggled that, that yep. first year. And I I kind of know they don't don't forget that guys. You know, and and I'm just so proud of how far they've come and how far they brought how far they brought the program because i'm not between the lines it's them it's them that are playing coach big senior class and you guys have graduated a lot of really good kids here these last two years but uh, you mentioned the senior class this year they were freshmen when you took over the program as the head coach what does this group mean to you and what has this group meant for this program and for the continue to rebuild to get this program back to where you guys were at maybe 10 years ago playing for state titles yeah, you know they just you know they're they're, they're great athletes, so they're great kids. Um, they also create some headaches too. But you know, like, you know they love they, they kind of like turn into my own kids. Like oh, they cause headaches, but you know I love them. But I could had to chew them out sometimes. And then you know it's like then you go to the end of the game and you know, after this game night, you're hugging each other, tell much you love them and stuff like that too. You know, so it's all about it's all about the relationships. And you know I, I hope I hope they know that any any of these coaches on staff here that you know they they create a bond with us for life. And if they don't need anything, we'll be there for them. What was the message if you want to relay to us what you told the guys at the end there in the huddle? Honestly, I, I told them guys, like, you know, uh, I, I told them, like, I had nothing planned to say if we lost. Because I, I, we, we, that, that's how I, I, I did. Like, it, 
and I'm in my, this is my fourth year. You know, I, I literally like, guys, I'm sorry. I have something better to say at the banquet, but you know, I love you guys and thanks for everything you gave to us. And we just, you know, shared, shared a moment with each other, but I you know I didn't have anything planned because you know, they, they, they the kids believed and they were, they, they were confident, you know, and they were excited about this game. It was, it was a long week. They were chomping yeah. at the bits and, you know, and, now, a few things go a different way. Who knows what happened? But, you know, it definitely wasn't for lack of effort or um, effort by our kids. Well, Coach, we appreciate everything throughout the entire season, all the pregame interviews, the lineups, the postgame interviews for Saturday morning, for Friday night. You do a great job of helping us out, getting us stats and stuff on the weekends so we can write the story. So we thank you very much. We congratulate you on a great season this year. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Thanks for all you do. You met Head Coach Ryan Steinkamp again with the Kemper Knights. We'll wrap up and be back with more of the Peach Ranch Coaches Show coming up next year on KCIM. Score big when you come on down to the Carroll Pizza Ranch to dig into the country's best chicken, piping hot pizza, and their fresh salad bar. They're open to serve you all your Pizza Ranch favorites from 11 to 8 on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 5 to 8. Get their famous buffet your way where you can request your favorite pizza. Everyone wins at Pizza Ranch. Just off Highway 30, downtown Carroll, open seven days a week. Whoa, that's good. Deb Danner here to join us on the Pizza Ranch at Coaches Show. We're going to talk at Carroll Girls Swimming as they have their state qualifying meet going on today over in Ames and everything going to get underway at noon today. The other teams there, of course, Ames, Fort Dodge, Oskaloosa, Sioux City, uh, Boone, Des Moines, Hoover, Marshalltown, and Perry. And Coach, as I look through that roster of teams, there's not many, if any, that you guys haven't seen at some point this season. True. Um, you know, just uh, we haven't seen Hoover, Marshalltown, or Oskaloosa yet. So, um, you know, we, we didn't go to that Marshalltown invite this year. Otherwise, we would have seen all those teams. So we went to the Fort Dodge invite instead. So, yeah, you know, we got a, a few teams that will be new for us this season. And i um, pretty excited to see what they have and what we have compared to them. Coach, does it help, or, or or do you think when you guys see so many of the teams kind of know the level, not just being able to look at numbers, but having swam against those girls? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of nice knowing what we're up against, but it's kind of nice not knowing because mm-hmm. then, you know, they have to be on top. They have to go as fast as they can. They don't know what is next to them, and, and they're going to have to swim even harder to make sure that they beat them, so – that's always kind of nice, too, having that uh, new competition. Last week when you and I chatted, you guys were going to be in the taper this week. Uh, how did you feel like the week win, and what was the focus each day uh, in practice to get ready for today? Yeah, you know, taper went very well for us. Um, the girls are responding very well. Um, you know, we just basically we, we focused on just the things we want to have happen at the meet today, um, you know, strong starts strong finishes, good turns, you know, just, you know, making sure we're pulling water hard and, and just basically what what it is we want to have happen for our meet today. What was the mentality like for the girls each day in practice? Did you like to see the focus that you were getting? Yeah, um, it, it's taper week, so there's, I mean, the focus is very different for taper. Um, it's they're very happy all week long. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's a different kind of a focus. It, it's not like the focus we have like before a regular invite or dual meet or anything. It, it's just, um, it's kind of hard to explain. You kind of have to be there to experience it. <laughs> I imagine it sounds like it's maybe a little more rowdy or was it more of a quiet atmosphere this week? No, it's very rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, yeah, they, I, they have a lot of extra energy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not for sure how to use it, right? Right. So hopefully we get it all honed into our stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Deb, last week you and I chatted, you know, and we knew we were going to be talking today. Um, You know, it's always that hard thing probably to determine uh, what the lineup is going to look like because you've done such a great job this year of getting kids in a lot of different events and different races to see where everybody maybe is going to work the best. Um, As best as you can, what's the lineup going to look like today? Yeah, I feel like we've got a fairly strong lineup today. Um, You know, our... I've got two relays that are, I'm 
I can't say 100% positive we'll get in because you don't know, but I'm 99% sure we'll get in. Um, a third relay that I'm very hopeful for, um, the girls have been doing really well uh, with their taper, and I feel like that they can pull this off and, and get that third event, third relay in. Um, I've got about three, four, four girls that I'm really hopeful of getting in individual events. So, um, you know, if they want it bad enough, they'll, they'll make it happen. And yeah, you know, the, the rest of the team is there. Um, they're going to all drop time. They're all going to swim super fast and be super proud of their, their swims. And I will be super proud of their swims. Um, it's, I feel like we got a, a really good lineup going for us and um you know how we'll place at the meet not sure but the the whole goal here is just to try and get whatever we can to state. If I remember correctly you guys and the girls pretty familiar with this pool and 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 where you're going to be swimming today? No, we've actually never swum at this pool yet. Um this is the Ames built a new pool and um this is their first year of hosting a regional site. So, no, we have not been at this pool. So it, it's kind of exciting to see uh, see what it's like there. How does that impact you guys? Uh, would you have it rather be where you're familiar and the girls are comfortable, or do you think that they're just they're so prepared and so ready to go that it's not going to matter? Yeah, you know, they're prepared. They're ready. It, it doesn't matter what pool we're at. I think they're just going to um, – they're, they're just going to swim like crazy. It, it doesn't matter where we're at. Coach, how deep is is the field over there today? And, and what are some of the events where anybody that's going over to follow you and the girls today uh, should kind of be paying attention where th- there's going to be some really great races? And how many of those maybe will the Tigers be right there involved with? Yeah, you know, so um, the 53 is going to be a very great race to watch. Um, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of fast swimming there. We've got two girls that are, um, in contention to making it to state there. Um, the hunter fly, uh, Amelia Holt will be there, um, trying to hit her second event into state. Uh, Emma will be swimming her breaststroke, which she's already a state qualifier. So, um, the, they have some very, other teams have some very good breaststrokers too. So it'll be a fun race to watch to see who wins that one. Um, the relays, all of the relays are just going to be amazing to watch. They're going to be so close. Um, it will be a very exciting day. Where does this one maybe compare to some of the past uh, state qualifying meets that you guys have been in for kind of overall depth and talent at the field? Yeah, you know, um, Ames is a very top-notch team, um, so they're going to have a lot of great competition there. Uh, Fort Dodge has really been swimming good this year. Um, you know, and Sioux City is another one of those top teams. So, you know, there's there's a, a lot of great competition there. Perry's got some really great competition going on this year. So, um, uh, we like I said, I haven't seen Marshalltown yet, so I'm not real sure just exactly, you know, how they're swimming. But um, I know they've always had strong teams, so it, it'll be – we're going to have a lot of great competition, and it's really going to help us push us into some really fast times. Well, Coach, as always, we always appreciate the time. Uh, looking forward to seeing how the girls do today and absolutely looking forward to getting over to Marshalltown uh, to watch all the qualifiers at State next Saturday. Yes, thank you. You bet. Head Coach Deb Dander again with the Carroll Girls Swim Team. Again, they're in the state qualifying meet coming up in Ames at noon today. We'll be back with more of the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show right here on KCIM. It's a red hot snack sale this weekend at your Carroll High V. Now through Sunday, get two Sunbelt Bakery granola or soft bake bars for only $4, three Pepperidge Farm Goldfish crackers for just $6, and Hostess Multi Pack snacks only $2.48. Get all these snack deals and more this weekend only at your Carroll High V. We're back here on the Pizza Ranch at Coaches Show on this Saturday morning talking Kemper Volleyball as uh, head coach Rusty Wintermote is joining us here as we wrap up the season with the Knights. Uh, and coach, as always, appreciate you joining us. Oh, good morning, Mr. Blankman. It, it, the word wrap up, it's, uh, it's been weird since we got back and got done. It's, it's what do I do now with my time? And, um, and everybody keeps saying just take a step back and 
image everything and, and, and be thankful for what you were a part of and the, the kids that you were a part of. And uh, they were right. Uh, it was a blessing of a run. And, and uh, but yes, it's, it's hard to say wrap up uh, because it just feels like it, it flew by. And, and that must be a sign uh, we had a good time. So uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, that old show with the, uh, was it the, uh, Welcome back. Is it Welcome Back, Carter? No. Uh, Jimmy always has a good time. I, I can't remember the show, but uh, maybe the people out there hearing can can correct me on what I'm talking about. But, uh, I, I think the show might yeah. have been Good Times, if I if 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 I'm remembering correctly. But uh, I, I think you are correct. That must be dating me. <laughs> well, dating us both because I'm old enough to remember it as well, Coach. <laughs> You mentioned the good time. You guys had a great run. I know it came to an end earlier than than what you want. I even had some of the girls saying that they wanted to at least get through uh, that quarterfinal down at the state tournament this year and, and un- unable to do it, but not because of lack of effort, certainly not because of the quality of play that you played, I thought, on Tuesday. You ran into a good Grundy center team. I, I thought it was you know four really played sets. Uh, you guys able to get set number two. Um, guaranteeing that it was going to be at, at least a four setter. And the thing that maybe you hadn't thought about, you guys are the only team to lose in class 2A um, in any of the rounds that didn't get swept. Well, I'll take that as the as uh, positive. Um, but you know, the other thing, as you talked, we were four sets, but it was, it was fun to watch those kids. Um, at first, it was nerves. It, it was kind of like Ridgeview uh, right at the beginning where we just fell down. And, and it wasn't anything that they were doing special. It's just we weren't committed. We weren't committed to doing things that we did, and we were nervous. Yep. And But once they called that time out, and we just talked about, do you deserve to be here? And they all looked me in the eyes, which was fun. Yes, we deserve to be here. And I said, well, then go out and play Kemper Volleyball. Like, you believe you, be, you deserve to be here. And, and they just started whittling back, and you know, like Coach Lonnie and I would discuss, and Boz is like, if they can just make a run to get back and be competitive, game two will be different. And uh, it, they did. They uh, they never died. Uh, they never showed any emotion that said we're in trouble. Uh, but you know, uh, they 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 ran our game plan. Uh, those kids ran our game plan with a mixture of uh, set it high and let it fly, and also a mixture of um, let's run a faster paced offense. And uh, by mixing it up, I think they caused them some problems. And I looked at the stats after we were done, and uh, we held uh, Grundy to one of its lower mm-hmm. uh, hitting percentages of the season. And so it's like, well, it's two years in a row that conference that we've had to play two teams out of that conference, and we've done a great job of defending them. So, um, again, hats off to the girls for going with the game plan, understanding who we wanted to take away. and who we knew was going to do what. So I wasn't surprised it went four. I was hoping it would go five, but I wasn't surprised that it went at least four just because I thought, I thought uh, you know, throw, throw out the numbers for Willis. I thought um, we were very comparable in the teams that we had played and the teams that we had beat and the teams that we had lost to that they had beaten, uh, but were very close scores. So I liked our chances. and But, you know, the girls are the ones that had to like it because, they showed a lot of confidence uh, right after they found out who we were playing. It was like, all right, let's go down and play. A little bit different story last year. They were worried about who they were playing. Now they were just like, let's go down and play. We, we can play with them. And, and I believe they certainly showed that. Cats off and blessed with the camper crowd that showed up and, and uh, cheered these girls on. And, and uh, boy, I tell you what, there's one thing that, that the camper, the camper people know how to travel and follow a team and, and, uh, um, and the, the kids recognized it, and they were very appreciative of it and uh, just hated to see it uh, come to an end, like you said. Coach, you mentioned uh, that you guys held him. You held him to a 167 kill efficiency. And, yeah, if you take out uh, Willis, she finished up with 28 kills but also had 82 swings uh, to be able to get that. What was it? Because I thought it was every layer of your defense. What was it about the defensive effort against them and their hitting that, that stood out for you? Well, what stood out is the, the, the ability of the girls to, um, again, go through the game plan and realize Willis is going to get her swings and she's going to get her kills because, you know, if you have 60, 80 swings like she has been lately, you're going to get a high number of kills, you know, because she does a nice job of mixing it up. But we just discussed about 
where the setter was going to be and who had to rotate in the back line to cover that setter. And, and if, you know, the left, you know, Casey and Aubrey had the job of going with the setter and not necessarily jumping with her, but being ready to uh, defend if she wants to uh, toss it back. And then Kaylee Simon's obviously doing a great job of rotating um, around uh, when the setter would do something. And then just finding the gaps when, uh, when the Willis would swing on the outside, you know, Kaylee and Brooke and, where he both had to read and react and be proactive versus reactive. And I thought as the match went, they were doing a better job of proactively going after something. And I said, if you guess wrong, you guess wrong. Don't worry about it. You're at least playing athletically. Uh, so um, the girls, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the girls' timing on blocking got better as the match went along. Um, so, you know, if, if you're going to give up 82 swings, then that girl's arm had to have been tired. Um, you know, it's, it's okay. And we'll just take our, we, we told them we'll take our chances with everybody else. If we can slow down everybody else, cut down their numbers on the kills from the other hitters, the, you know, the right side, the lefty, the middle, which they didn't run a lot. And then, uh, take away the setter's ability to jump. Um, I, I, I said, we'll be in this match and we'll have a chance. So, uh, the girls just, they, they, it wasn't anything special that we had to do. It was just a matter of here's what we need to do. And, they remembered it, and they saw everything that they did, and they came back to the huddle and said, okay, um, we need to rotate here. We need to rotate there. We've got to make sure now we're taking away lines. So, you know, Mr. Blankman, it wasn't anything special that the coaching staff did other than just reminding them here's what they like to do. And then it's a good group of kids that uh, have really enjoyed playing defense, and, and uh, you could see off of a, when they would get a tip how the back row would rotate to it. Uh, or if she drove it down through the, the block and Kaylee was there. It was just a fun match to watch these kids um, dig and dig and dig and dig, and they took some serious shots. And, you know, Kaylee having 22 digs, and Brooke having – Brooke had 10 digs. Yes. That's her most digs she's ever had. Yep. Uh, you know, and, you know uh, Bree, you know, who had her normal nine digs usually. and But there were setters and there were, you know, hitters that had four or five digs. So – uh, the kids put their heart out there. I mean, it, it, again, it's another ESPN highlight. You got Aubrey Hewton, who you know, on the left side is, is diving to save a ball, and she gets it over the net. And it's like, boy, their heart is on their sleeve, and they're showing you guys what they have. So, um, not a serious game plan. Just they just came down to don't get out hustled, and, and they knew how to play, and that was fun to watch. Coach, uh, offensively, Aubrey Hewton, 15 kills. Casey Peter, 11. You guys really balanced after that with uh, Franny and Lauren at 8 and Brianna with 5. But uh, talk about your guys' aggressiveness going after them offensively as well. Well, we also talked about they had they were very similar in, in the number of blocks, uh, very comparable in blocking team as that we were. So we knew that we couldn't just um, – we didn't want to start tipping and, and, and getting it into the donuts because they covered it. So we just talked about um, you go out and trust your ability. Go ahead and hit hard. If they block it, they block it. So what? Let's just keep coming after them because if we don't, they're gonna we're going to be playing right into their hands. So the girls kept swinging hard. We've got some nice bounces off our of hands. And, and Aubrey and, and Casey both with you know, the 26 kills you know, combined, um, they really stepped it up this year compared to last year. And uh, – we needed our outside hitters to have the, that kind of night and then just kind of mix in everybody else. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's it, when, you know, coming lost for words here, I apologize, but uh, it, uh, it only took them to understand that when there was one time out we took when they realized uh, I didn't even have to tell them. It was, it was them telling each other, quit pushing, quit tipping. If you're going to do it, take it to the corner. Let's take it to the corner. But let's just keep coming after them because they got tired, just like we got tired. And you know, good, you know, some weird things can happen when teams get tired. But the girls decided, you know, we never have really had to tell them quit pushing and tipping. We just kept telling them, <clears throat> remember the game plan, and then they would decide, yeah, we got to come back after them. And and uh, we that was nice not to have to remind them to to not play soft, just play aggressive. You know, what happens happens. But swing hard from the back row. Swing hard from serving. You know, you're going to have a lot more successes. We're going to have errors, yes, but we can live with those errors because you went after somebody. And if you're going to play passive, let's just give them the ball and give them the trophy. So um, that was really all the mindset was, is that 
They just could not back off from uh, what they knew was successful. And, uh, and also knowing who the opponent on the other side was, we had to go challenge them because we just didn't want to, <clears throat> we didn't want them to feel like they could roll us over. Well, Coach, I tell you what, it's been a, an extremely fun year coaching uh, and, or watching this team and, and talking to you each week. Going to miss it. Uh, this is a great group of kids that you got a chance to coach. Uh, so we appreciate all the time all season long. And I know that even when you had to go to Shenandoah and Glenwood, you'd come back and watch the film and, and uh, text us the stats so that we could write up our recap story. So we appreciate Everything you've done for us all season long, you, you make uh, covering your program easy and fun for us. So we appreciate that. So uh, have a great off season, and I know that we'll see you soon. And, and go Big Red, right? You bet. Go Big Red. And we can say go Big Red for Camper. And yes, for, for absolutely. Grass, but, uh, yeah, you bet. You, Mr. Blankman, again, um, to you guys in Carroll Broadcasting and all that you do for Camper Sports. And gosh, you have the winter sports coming up. Uh, but for, for us in volleyball, these kids would not be as recognized if it wasn't for the hand and the voice of, of Carol Broadcasting. So, um, And, again, I will miss these talks, uh, especially the game day talks and the Saturday morning talks. But uh, guess what? I get to see my grandkids again today. I get to go celebrate a birthday. So um, it's, always talk, you know, it's always fun talking to you about my grandkids, and then we can talk about everything else. But uh, to all the people out there that uh, got to see Camper Volleyball and all the fans and parents, God bless you, and thank you very much for what you did in supporting these kids. And, and you'll always be in our memory uh, and our thoughts as we prepare for next season. Head Coach Rusty Wintermode again with the uh, Kemper Volleyball team back with more of the Pete Ranch Coaches Show coming up here on KCIM. ABC Wednesday, November 8th. It's country music's biggest night. The CMA Awards, live. With performances by Luke Bryan, Lainey Wilson, Jelly Roll, and Kay Michelle. Old Dominion with Megan Maroney. Carly Pierce featuring Chris Stapleton. Tanya Tucker with Little Big Town. And more. The best in country music! Woo! Luke Bryan and Peyton Manning host. The CMA Awards live. Wednesday, November 8th, 8, 7 central on ABC. And stream next day on Hulu. What's holding you back from learning the language you've always wanted to know? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's lessons take just 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes isn't long. Nope. And they're fun. So you don't realize you're learning a language, but you are. In three weeks, you're able to start having conversations. And Babbel's lessons are built around real life. And with Babbel, it isn't hard. It's It's perfect. perfect. Now try Babbel free. Just go to Babbel.com. That's B-A-B. B-E-L.com. Save now on your next car, truck, or SUV at Champion Ford. Take advantage of low interest rates from Ford on F-150, Explorer, Expedition, and Edge. Some as low as 0%. Many units in stock and ready to go. Save big money, too. Take $9,000 off a 2023 F-150. Thinking electric? Save over $14,000 on a 2023 Mustang Mach-E. Looking for use? We've discounted most of our pre-owned stock, some as much as $3,000. Drive through the lot, check out the tags in the windows, and save big. But don't wait. These won't last long. Carroll's Ford dealer, Champion Ford, where everybody wins. Thomas Nelson, the head cross-country coach with the Kemper Knights, joining us here as we take a look back at State last Saturday. Of course, on the girls' side of things, Marie Day ran. On the boys' side of things, it was Ryan North and Jacob Graving. And, and Coach, you know, during the commercial break, I kind of joked with you, are you thawed out yet? But uh, as much as that was a joke and having a little bit of fun about how cold last Saturday was, there was a little truth to that. It was cold up there last weekend. Absolutely. Um, it was definitely uh, one of the colder days of the year so far, um, but our kids kind of embraced it and still went out and had a great day. How did you guys get yourself ready for the weather, and then how did you deal with things last weekend? Um, we practiced. You know, it, fortunately, uh, it started to get cold uh, Thursday and Friday, um, and so we, we practiced uh, out, out in the cold, um, especially uh, Friday afternoon when we were doing our pre-meet practice. Um, we actually thought it was a little colder then. Um, than it was going to be at the state meet. It was definitely windier. Um, so our kids had a pretty good idea of what it was going to feel like. Um, and, and they also started to get the idea of like, hey, do, do I want to wear gloves? Do I not want to wear gloves? Am I going to wear tights or not? Um, and so I think they were able to make a really educated decision on their apparel based off of, of a couple of days of practice leading into it. And uh, I, I think they all said, yeah, it's cold, but um, I, I can run in this. And, and um, they did. 
Let's start with the boys, both Ryan and Jacob. Uh, better times, better finishes than last year. Um, how were they able to do that uh, in the conditions that they had to run in? Um, I just think they're both, like, like I said a couple times, they're both in great shape and they're both really confident coming into the meet. Um, last year we had really nice conditions, um, so for them both to improve their times um, it is just a really awesome feat by them. Um, and to both get better places too. But I think they were just really mentally locked in on like, this is my last race. I'm going to go and prove. Um, and they did a really good job doing that. Let's go through with the race for both of those guys. How did Ryan run his race? They, they both actually um, got out pretty well. Um, Ryan was a 5.16 first mile. Jake was a 5.19. Um, so Ryan actually got out just a little uh, quicker than Jake. Um, and then they really worked their way to climb up the pack. I think at the first mile mark, they were between um, the 50s and 60s kind of place-wise. Um, and, and then Ryan pretty consistently was just about three seconds ahead of Jake each mile. Um, and they did a really good job keeping their splits pretty close. Uh, and when when they were finishing, uh, I mean, there, there's uh, just about a uh, seven-second difference between Ryan and Jake's time, um, but 10 places. Um, and, and there was just a crowd of about 30 kids that they were in. Um, that, that, you know, they got a lot of them and some of them got them, but they both had a pretty strong kick uh, to finish where they did. Yeah. Take us through how they were able to do that. Then you get that many guys all kind of coming down that chute and that tunnel, you know, to, to the finish line. Uh, how were they able to kind of weave through guys and not get maybe hung up behind somebody? I, I think a lot of that's, uh, experience in track. Um, you know, track races are a lot more um, condensed and tight, especially the, those 800 starts of the miles, that sort of stuff. And both those guys have a lot of experience in that. Um, so I don't think that's something that really phases them. Um, they're just, you know, used to it after years of doing that. And, and years of, you know, getting out at the start of cross-country races, you're basically doing the same thing. Um, and really, at the state meet, that, that's your reality as you run the whole race because there's so many mm -hmm. people around you. But um, they kept their composure um, and were able to both have a, a pretty strong kick to finish. And you and I were talking this this field that those guys ran in on Saturday. It, it was pretty deep and talented. Yeah, uh, there was just just this senior class this year across the state of Iowa uh, is incredibly uh, loaded, um, and, and that's why you know, uh, as Jake was saying on the way up, you know, he thought he could maybe run a better time this year and actually place worse, just because so many kids were returning from last year's state meet, as well as some really stud freshmen that uh, had entered the fold. Um, and, and Jake, you know, improves his time by 17 seconds uh, mm -hmm. and only just improves by one place. Uh, and that's just because so much of that field returned and it, it's such a, a talented meet. So um, I, I think, though, it was really good. You know, their goals all year were to improve time and place. And, and they, even with all the talent, even with the cold, were able to do that. Let's bounce over to Marie over on the girls' side of things. Ran a 1957, improved her time and her placing, finishing 36th overall, wrapping up uh, a great season and a great uh, cross-country career. Yeah, Marie, and her, she really was hoping to run a little better than last year's state meet. It was her first time there last year, and she ran well, but I, I think she walked away from last year saying, um, I, I can do this better next time. Um, and she, I mean, she improves by over 30 seconds. Uh, and considering the conditions, that's just absolutely a huge amount of improvement there and went from 45th place last year to 36th this year. Um, I, I think just mentally she had seen everything before, she had done it before, and, and so felt a little more comfortable comfortable with the whole process. Coach, for the boys, they had a chance to run kind of together and work out together. Marie running by herself up there uh, as the lone night girl to qualify. Um, what was her mentality going in? Was it to try and find somebody? Was it to get into a group? Uh, it's different when you're running by yourself than it is when you have somebody else maybe to kind of run with. A absolutely. Um, Marie's done a really good job this year kind of identifying girls from other schools um, that are around her kind of uh, skill level and talent level. Um, and, and so she knows a couple different kids uh, that if she's around them, that's where she should be at certain parts of the race. Um, getting out uh, around Pellet from Atlantic has always been um, good for Marie. Um, and then just kind of locking in with some of the other girls that we've been able to race with uh, multiple times throughout this year. So uh, she doesn't have a teammate that she can stand right next to or run right next to, but she does uh, did know some uh, girls out there uh, that just help her kind of mark her pace. And, and the other part is Marie's such a confident runner that uh, she could be out there on her own without other people and she could still probably put that time down. 
just because she's so locked in on what she's doing. How'd the beginning of the race go for her? How was the start? Uh, I thought she got out in pretty good position. Um, and that's something she's done really well all year. Of course, it looks a little different at the state meet, you know, when uh, you've got uh, all that other, other talent there. But she put herself out where she needed to be, um, probably uh, about, about the 40s, um, and, and then was able to just kind of stick around and climb up just a little um, as the race went on. To be able to run a, a faster time like she did this year by as much as she did, I'm guessing that each mile pretty consistent and, and, and each mile climbing a little bit? Uh, she, she went 604, 636, um, and then the last uh, section was 715. Um, and, and on a course like this, I, I think you know get, getting out in position is so important. Um, so I was really glad to see she went out that hard, uh, just because otherwise you spend so much time kind of fighting, getting around people and stuff like that. Uh, you know, w- one thing we try to tell our kids a lot is if you want to do something uh, you haven't done before, like setting a PR, then you have to be willing to do stuff you haven't done before earlier in the race, including going out a little harder than maybe you're used to. Um, and I-, I thought she kind of embraced that mentality, and I, I think the results kind of speak for it. Coach, uh, you guys had an outstanding year built, uh, you know, kind of continued building the future as well. Uh, let's start with the boys. What what are some of the highlights and what are some of the memories you'll take away from this season? Uh, we just had a, and, and, you know, I can, I can say this to the boys and the girls, we, we have a phenomenal group of kids. Uh, we have some very uh, fun, energetic, uh, and nice kids that are part of our program um, that have a lot of talents outside of cross country too, whether it's um, athletic, whether it's uh, in drama, whether it's in band. Um, and when you get all those kids together, it's just practice can be a really fun time. Um, especially, you know, they go on their own run, but then we chat for a while after we uh, play some games or something like that. But uh, it was just a really special group of kids. And, and our seniors, uh, especially, they've been around kind of in leaders for the last two years almost. And, and they were just a great group to have. So uh, I will definitely be thankful for what they brought to the program and having them around. What's the future look like for this program? I think the future is really bright. Uh, you know, we just had a, a, a pretty strong season, a, a very strong season, you know, with different uh, wins and, and lots of medals. Uh, but we bring a ton back. Uh, on, on the boys' side, uh, bringing Dayton, Fletch, Blake, Thomas, Charlie, Jacob McCarger. Um, I think we're going to see some uh, competition from an uh, eighth grader right now, Oliver Vanami, uh, and, and him and Maddox, uh, Cohen, and, and Tyler Lizey for who's going to be maybe that seventh a varsity guy next year. So uh, I, I think that'll be really good for us. And on the girls' side, um, Addie Davis and, and Shelby both had really strong years. Um, Maddie showed a lot of development, and we've got a lot of middle school girls um, who, who look like they could maybe compete for varsity next year too. So I think it'll a lot, a lot of it will come down to who wants to put the work in in between the seasons. Uh, if, if it's just kind of a, a show up for the start of cross-country practice and hope to get better, um, then, you know, we'll see. But if people really dedicate themselves over the winter, uh, over the summer and spring, like Marie Ryan and Jake have, um, then we've got uh, enormous potential. Well, Coach, we thank you for everything all season long. We enjoy these conversations every Saturday morning. Going to miss them. But uh, this was a fun group to follow, to cover, uh, and uh, and looking forward to next season. I love the, the direction this uh, Kemper Cross Country program seems to be headed. Thank you for all your coverage, and I just want to say thank you to our parents who helped us get so much done this season with team meals, um, with snacks, and with uh, just all the special things we've made happen with homecoming. Absolutely. Head coach again, Thomas Nelson, with the Kemper Cross Country Team. Mac with a more from the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. We'll be back right after this on KCIM. Score big when you come on down to the Carroll Pizza Ranch to dig into the country's best chicken, piping hot pizza, and their fresh salad bar. They're open to serve you all your Pizza Ranch favorites from 11 to 8 on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 5 to 8. Get their famous buffet your way where you can request your favorite pizza. Everyone wins at Pizza Ranch. Just off Highway 30, downtown Carroll, open seven days a week. Whoa, that's good.
Back to wrap up the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show for this Saturday, November the 4th. Jeff Blankman with you here today. Thanks to Ryan Steinkamp, uh, the Kemper football coach, Deb Danner, the Carroll Girls swim coach, Rusty Wintermote, the Kemper volleyball coach, and Thomas Nelson, the Kemper cross-country coach, for joining us on this Saturday morning. We recapped the season with Coach Steinkamp, Coach Wintermote, and Coach Nelson, of course, Coach Danner, and the uh, Carroll Girls swim team headed over uh, to the state qualifying meet for them today. That'll be in Ames. State comes up for them next Saturday. Now we're going to take two weeks off from the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show to preview the upcoming basketball season. Next Saturday morning, November the 11th, we're going to have the girls high school boys, uh, girls basketball preview show. So we'll talk with all 10 of our area girls basketball coaches about the upcoming season and uh, we'll get some thoughts uh, from them and that show will air in this slot beginning at 8 o'clock. We're planning on the boys basketball preview show coming up Saturday, November the 18th. Uh, Now, that could depend on if Iowa State and Texas are scheduled to play early that day on the 18th. But uh, right now, we are planning on uh, previewing the upcoming boys basketball with the coaches show and uh, basketball season with the coaches coming up again on November the 18th. The girls next week and boys the following week. Wrestling coaches, don't worry. Wrestlers and wrestling fans, we're going to catch up with all the wrestling coaches and we'll get all those posted to our website at sports.1380kcim.com. Do want to remind you again that coming up today, we've got our KCM Sports Rewind. That's our Tuesday morning, 9.30 till 10 o'clock show. We announced, uh, announced our Rewind All-Star teams on Tuesday morning. So we had first team, second team, third team, and honorable mention for volleyball. We had a volleyball player of the year, which was Maddie Nielsen of Audubon. We had a volleyball coach of the year. That was Rusty Wintermode of Kemper. Those kids, all that were named to all those teams and the coaches. We also have Brandon Steiger, who is our runner-up in our Coach of the Year voting. We've got them all invited to come to the All-Star festivities for football. We had first team offense, first team defense, second team offense, second team defense, third team, and honorable mention kids. We had a player of the year on offense, uh, and uh, that ended up uh, being, of course, this year, Brock Bading from the Kemper Knights. We also had a player of the year on defense, and that was Carter Ludwig with the ESAC Raiders. Uh, we had a, a coach of the year. Uh, that was Ryan Steinkamp at the Kemper Knights. Our runner-up coach of the year, Sean Burks from Audubon. All of those kids and coaches invited to come to the All-Star festivities again. The event's out at Carroll High School's gym today. Of course, doors are going to open about 1245. The event will get underway at around 1 o'clock. Senior volleyball girls will play in an All-Star game. Then we have a passing football passing competition that we're going to do with both all of the volleyball girls that want to do it and the football boys that want to do it. Then we'll have the football senior boys playing in an All-Star volleyball competition. And that one's always a lot of fun to watch. And then we've got the award ceremony where each of the kids and coaches will be awarded a certificate and a shirt, uh, and along with the coaches of the year that uh, we're going to be honoring today. So free event, open to the public. Please come on out and help us celebrate all of these uh, kids and coaches and thank them for the entertainment that they provide us throughout their season as we'll wrap up the season with all of them kids and coaches coming up today. Thank you for tuning in here to the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. We'll be back again coming up probably after Thanksgiving as we'll roll right into the winter sports season. Have a great weekend, everybody, and hope to see you out at Carroll High coming up today beginning at 1 o'clock.